I'd like to ask Councillor Julian Bell to open the meeting. Uh, thank you, Peter, and thank you, everybody, for coming in. Um, as Peter said, uh, uh, people are very concerned about what has happened, uh, and that's something that, as Ealing Council and as elected representatives of Ealing Council, uh, myself and other councillor colleagues that are here tonight have been acutely uh, aware of. Um, the issue has been ongoing for two and a half years, and throughout that period, um, residents have expressed two their and concerns, years. and uh, they have asked us to investigate uh, the problems in various ways. So if, if I go back to uh, just over a year ago, um, it was first thought that there were problems coming from FM Conway plant uh, in uh, Hillingdon, uh, in Hayes. And so uh, myself and others, we went to FM Conway, uh, we talked with FM Conway, uh, we also, through officers and personally through myself, spoke to Hillingdon uh, Council, who are the regulatory authority for FM Conway. I won't go further on that, but that is one of the issues uh, that has made this particularly complex and difficult, and we have made some progress in making changes to that plant at FM Conway and Hillingdon. In terms of the challenges at Southall uh, Gasworks, the Waterside Development, um, the acute problems uh, started to uh, come forward last summer, although I'd heard of uh, the smells long before that, so almost immediately two and a half years ago when the soil remediation started, there were complaints uh, from residents about the, the smells. And we were aware of those and officers responded to those uh, and also councillors. Now, when things got particularly challenging last summer, uh, I myself uh, wrote, uh, rang and spoke to the Environment Agency and we had various communications and correspondence about the problem. Obviously, uh, myself and other councillors visited the site. We had discussions with Barclay and about what they were doing and what uh, the problems were, and obviously we spoke with, with residents as well. Um, as a result of that, back in September of last year, the Council held a special uh, air quality scrutiny committee. That was uh, held at the end of September last year. I went along uh, because, as well as being leader, I have responsibility, cabinet responsibility for air quality. Um, there were a lot of representatives at that scrutiny committee. All of the people here tonight were at that uh, meeting too. Uh, the Environment Agency, uh, the uh, Atkins representatives from Berkeley, uh, and also some of our uh, technical officers from the council and our public health officers. At that point, uh, last September, the council asked, because of the concerns that were being expressed, Public Health England to uh, look at the problem and we ensured that they got three sets of data. They've now given us three uh, reports, uh, the latest one which came out yesterday. And the results from those Public Health England reports, which they'll be able to speak to, have been clear that the results obtained from the air quality monitoring indicate there is, that it is unlikely to be a direct touch psychological risk to the health of the nearby population. Now, they then go on to talk about odour. We know that there was a problem with odour. Uh, we've all smelt it. We've all recognised that it's a nuisance, frankly, uh, and a bad nuisance. Um, the council uh, recognises that, but in terms of the way that the regulatory uh, process worked, because of the ongoing works on the site, uh, it was the Environment Agency that were the primary regulator and so issuing a statutory nuisance notice by the council uh, would not have been the way forward at that point without uh, any support 
uh, from the Environment Agency and the data and everything that was being done uh, to mitigate the odours uh, did not uh, say that that was the route to go down. What was done at that point was that extra... E e I'll, I'll, I'm just coming to... Uh, yeah, I think it's important to get these points over. Thank you. 